Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the Minister M.L. Kimball coming to you live, and we are going to keep uh, continue our study here uh, with the Book of Jubilee. So if those of you that are joining me, I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to pick up from where we left off last time. You guys should be able to see my screen on the, on the screen, and we're going to get back into the Book of Jubilees. And I do believe we left off last week at chapter 21 so we're going to pick up at chapter 22 all right stay with me and it came to pass in the first week in the 44th jubilee in the second year that is the year in which abraham died that isaac and ishmael came from the well of the oath to celebrate the feast of shuavah that is the feast of the first fruits of the harvest to abraham their father and Abraham rejoiced because his two sons had come. For Isaac had many possessions in Beersheba, and Isaac was wont to go and see his possessions and to return to his father. And in those days, Ishmael came to see his father, and they both came together. And Isaac offered a sacrifice for an ascending smoke offering and presented it on the altar of his father, which he had made in Hebron. And he offered a thank offering and made a feast of joy before Ishmael, his brother. And Rebekah made new cakes from the new grain and gave them to Jacob, her son, to take them to Abraham, his father, from the first fruits of the land that he might eat and bless the creator of all things before he died. And Isaac, too, sent by the hand of Jacob to Abraham a best thank offering that he might eat and drink. And he ate and he drank and he blessed Elion, Yahuwah, who has created heaven and earth, who has made all the fat things of the earth and given them to the children of men that they might eat and drink and bless their creator. And now I give thanks unto you, my Yahuwah, because you have caused me to see this day. Behold, I am 100, three score and 15 years old, an old man and full of days. And all of my days have been unto me peace. The sword of the adversary has not overcome me in all that you have given me and my children all the days of my life until this day. My Elohim, may your mercy and your peace be upon your servant and upon the seed of his sons that they may be to you a chosen nation and an inheritance from amongst all the nations of the earth from henceforth unto all the days of the generations of the earth unto all the ages. And he called Jacob and he said, my son, Jacob, may the Yahuwah of all bless you and strengthen you to do righteousness and his will before him. And may he choose you and your seed that you may become a people for his inheritance according to his will always. And do you, my son Jacob, draw near and kiss me? And he drew near and kissed him. And he said, blessed be the son Jacob, my son Jacob, and all the sons of Yahuwah, all the sons of Yahuwah, all the sons of Yahuwah, unto all the ages. May Yahuwah give unto you a seed of righteousness and some of your sons may be, may he sanctify in the midst of the whole earth. So he says, some of his sons may he sanctify in the midst of the whole earth. May nations serve you, and all the nations bow themselves before your seed. Be strong in the presence of men and exercise authority of, over all the seed of Seth. Then your ways and the ways of your sons will be justified so that they shall become a holy nation. May Can I say something, sir? Oh, I didn't even know you was here. Sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry. Yep. Sure, yes. man. No problem. So I wanted to clarify. I was wrong on our last study where I had talked about uh, the sons of Seth being pre-flood. I was totally in error. The sons of that Seth is Hamite side. They were Canaanites. So I believe it's one of Ham's sons that was Seth or grandson, somewhere in that lineage. I was completely wrong. So I wanted to clear that up when we got back on here. 
Okay, so I I, I missed that. I, like, say that again. I, I don't know what you got wrong. I, I'm 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 lost. So on our last study, I had made a reference when Abraham had bought the field from the sons of Seth. I had said that these were Seth pre-flood Seth people, like oh. from uh, Adam's son Seth. I was okay. so wrong. That was. Yeah, I, I I just wanted to clear that up because I clearly said that. And then when I was studying for today's study, I had to study out Seth and he's from the Hamite line. He's a Canaanite. You know, uh, I was so wrong. So I just wanted so, to wait, be public so, on record that I was wrong. So Seth is from the Hamite line? Click on it. Click on Seth. That's Seth. Uh, Click on it. Okay. On line 12. The seed is chef. Click on it. Oh, the seed is chef? Yep. What is that? That comes up. Yep. So, Click. Third son of Adam. Third son of Adam? Yeah. Seth, yeah. Seth is more. The, yeah, no, it's just that's all it says. Seth, Seth is the third son of Adam. That's all that comes up. So that's what I had said, but I swear, man, I'm and, and I'm not swearing like to the most high, but I'm just like in my thinking. Um, can you Google? And I mean, so I thought I Googled or looked up and that son of Seth wasn't the third son of Adam, but that was one of Ham's sons or Ham's grandsons. Can And, and I don't want to throw you so, off the study, but that, so I, are, that's what I found. So are there two Seths? Well, well, that was so when I when I originally said last week, this is what I was talking about. I said he's the third from Adam because he Abraham bought a field from him, and it may be a completely different seed of Seth that they're talking about. But I was trying to clarify, thinking I was wrong, but that's what I thought. I thought it was Adam's son, but when I looked it up, I thought it said that Ham had a a, a son or grandson named. Seth, then I could be wrong and I'm driving and I can't pull it up to verify it. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to look that one, check that one out, because then if that's the case, that's something I true I one thousand percent missed this over many, many of my studies. I've I, I've seen a, a copycat Enoch, I've seen a copycat Methuselah, I've seen a copy all of the line that came down before uh Noah, I seen a copycat of it on on Cain's side. But I've never seen a copy that of Seth. I thought Seth was the only Seth that came from Adam. And from Seth's line is where you start to get Noah's line, which then leads you down to Abraham. Now, I don't know if there's another well, Seth. No. Well, you got, so you got, uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, but we know that after the flood, it wasn't no Seth people. It was Noah and his seed. So how after the flood can how after the flood can anybody get anything from any assessed people when all assessed people died off before the flood? Well, we got to take a look at the fact that remember Abraham uh, learned from Seth. Abraham spent time with Seth. Uh, all of that comes. Well, no, he spent, time, he spent time with Shem. Oh, you're right. I got him wrong. I'm mixed up here. That was right. You're right. I was wrong. Absolutely right. He spent time with Shem, not Seth. You're right. But I still don't think Seth is a Hamite because how could he be a Hamite when he is the descent, the only descendant that could have brought on the rest of the people after Cain killed Abel? No, I know Cain killed Abel, but look, you know when Noah... And you know, from the time Noah got on the flood, it was just his sons and daughters. It wasn't nobody before him. No, it wasn't. It was him and his. It was just him and his people. And so the Seth, Seth buying a field from the children of Seth, that would have been from one of his grandchildren, from somebody uh, from uh, Ham's uh, line. They were Canaan. They were Canaan. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, but I'll have to look once I stop driving. But, yeah, I'm still confused on how there's Sethites or Sethians after the flood. Yeah, it all makes sense. It would have to be, you know, 
Shemite, Hamite, or Yephethian, you know, in some of their lineage. Well, I mean, wouldn't Shemite, Hamite, Japhethian wouldn't, but well, wouldn't they don't aren't they descendants of Seth? They would be just as they would be descendants of Adam, but he went there and bought the land to bury his wife in when when Sarah died, he bought the cave from the children of Seth. It wouldn't have been the children of Seth. It would have been the children of Shem, Ham, or Japheth, or children of Noah, not the children of Seth, but they're all children of Noah. So, And I'm not saying that that's not the children of Seth, but it said the seed of Seth right there. I don't know. That's something I, I, I just got to quit. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll 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 just have to study it out. I, I might have to look it up too, because now I'm on a that got me that got me a little confused here. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. we definitely got to take another look. Okay, all right. Verse thirteen is where we left off. I'll just read that again. May Yahoo give you all the blessings wherewith He has blessed me and wherewith He has blessed Noah and Adam. May they rest on the sacred head of your seed from generation to generation forever. And may he cleanse you from all unrighteousness and impurity that you may be forgiven all the transgressions which you have committed ignorantly. And may he strengthen you and bless you and may you inherit the whole earth. And may he renew his covenant with you that you may be to him a nation for his inheritance for all the ages and that he may be to you and to your seed an Elohim in truth and righteousness throughout all the days of the earth. And do you, my son? Hey, can I stop you? Bert? Sure can. Sorry. One no, more no, thing. No. In verse verse 15, he says, and may he, what? Renew his covenant, right? Uh -huh. Because he's, he's, he's asking, you know, he's hoping that the most high would continue in the renewal of the covenant. And then there's somewhere that we read in Jeremiah, I think it's Jeremiah 33, three. No, I, don't hold me on that. I'll have to find it. But it's the argument that people try to say is that scripture people try to use in Jeremiah about there's a new covenant coming. You know what I'm talking about? Uh huh. There's a scripture uh -huh. in Jeremiah where people try to use where they try to use it for the New Testament, new covenant. But that where they talk about a new covenant in there, it's giving the same emphasis as this, a renewal, not a new one, but a renewal of the covenant. And why does he have to renew the covenant with people? Because they break it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He already knew these people was going to be flimsy and he just hopes that these covenants are renewed because the people could ultimately break that covenant, so which they have. This, so at this, at, at this point, would we say that they had recovered? I mean, they had already broken the covenant. So with, uh, no, no, they had not broken the covenant yet because Abraham was just uh, blessing his seed and, and, and just basically giving away his blessings right there before his death. And so, so that, and, I don't and think so, that. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go so, ahead. so will that have been. So then why is it so is he what when he's saying renew, he say and may he renew. Is that a prophecy? Yeah. With, with, so, yeah. So I would say that's that's forward thinking because he had got the promise. Abraham got the promise, you know. And then he's just saying, renew that covenant. I'll be your God. You be my people. Um, because you, uh, oh, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. But, yeah, basically Abraham had to want to ask God to make sure, the most high, that he would renew the covenant with his seed. And then that covenant was renewed through Shem. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Not through, not through, not through Shem. I'm sorry. Through Isaac. You know, so the Most High had that same covenant with Isaac. Then the Most High had that same covenant with Jacob. You know, it just came down the line. He kept renewing the covenant and still walking with uh, the seed of Abraham, keeping that promise. I see. I see. Can you guys still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. I got it. Okay. So he says, um, 
and do you, my son Jacob, remember my words and observe the commandments of Abraham, your father. Separate yourself from the nations, eat not with them, and do not according to their works, and become not their associate, for their works are unclean, and all their ways are a pollution and an abomination and uncleanliness. They offer their sacrifices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they offer their sacrifices to the dead. They worship evil spirits. They eat over mm. the graves. And the, all their works are vanity and nothingless. They have no heart to understand, and their eyes do not see what their works are and how they err in saying to a piece of wood, that's that cross, you are my God, uh -huh. and, to, <laughs> and to a stone. You are my Adonai, and you are my deliverer, and they have no heart. And as for you, my son Jacob, may Yahuwah help you and the Elohim of heaven bless you and remove you from their uncleanliness and from all their error. Be you aware, my son Jacob, of taking a woman from any seed of the daughters of Canaan, for all his seed is to be mm -hmm. rooted out of the earth. Whoa. What do you mean all of his seed is to be rooted out of the earth? Can you help me with that there, Mr. Pounds? Or Bill, somebody, what is he talking about here? Well, I so at some point, and this is this is my guess. I'm guessing. I'm flat out saying I'm guessing, taking a crack at it. So realistically, we knew that uh, ultimately Israel was going to take over that land at some point. But we know for a fact that not all Canaanites, which would mean basically all Hamites disappeared, that never happened. But we do know that Abraham's seed took over and rooted out that area once the Most High gave him that land. That's my best crack at it. That sounds, well, you know what? That sounds pretty right. That sounds pretty right to me because there's no, because because if that's the case, we would all, all every Canaanite would have been rooted out the land. Okay, I got it. Yeah, God, ever, never been another Canaanite if it meant that their bloodline would have stopped right then. Got it. For owing to the transgression of Ham, Canaan erred and all his seed shall be destroyed from off the earth and all the remnant thereof and none springing from him shall be saved on the day of judgment. And as for all the worshipers of idols and the profane, there shall be no hope for them in the land of the living, and there shall be no remembrance of them on the earth, for they shall descend into Sheol and into the place of condemnation shall they go. As the children of Sodom were taken away from the earth, so will also all those who worship idols be taken away. Fear not, my son Jacob, and be not dismayed. O son of Abraham, may Yahuwah guard you from destruction and from all the paths of error, may he deliver you. This house I have I have built for myself that I might put my name upon it in the earth. It is given to you and to your seed forever, and it will be named the house of Abraham. It is given to you and to your seed forever, for you will build my house and establish my name before Yahuwah, Forever, your seed and your name will stand throughout all generations of the earth. And he ceased commanding him and blessed him. And the two laid together on one bed, and Jacob slept in the bosom of Abraham, his father's father, his grandfather. And he kissed him seven times, and his affection and his heart rejoiced over him. And he blessed him with all his heart, and he said, Yahuwah, the Elohim of all and creator of all who brought me forth from Ur of the Cassidium, that he might give me this land to inherit it forever, that I might establish a holy seed, blessed be Yahuwah forever. And he blessed Jacob and he said, my son over whom with all my heart and my affection I rejoice, may your grace and your mercy be lifted up upon him and upon his seed always. And do not forsake him, nor set him at naught from henceforth unto the days of eternity. And may your eyes be open upon him and upon his seed that you may guard him, bless him, and may sanctify him as a nation for your inheritance. And bless him with all the blessings from henceforth 
unto all the days of eternity and renew your covenant and grace with him as with his seed according to all your good pleasure unto all the generations of the earth. That concludes my uh, my 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 chapter. If you guys got time to read one, if not, we're just gonna go ahead and conclude it today. No, why don't you, if you don't mind, keep reading because I'm okay. driving now. Bill may not be driving, and he may be able to read, but all I can do is listen and comment. But I'm driving. Okay, but Bill may Bill, be able to read. I'm not sure if he's stationary. Bill, do you want to pick up chapter 30, 23? He's, he's on mute. I, I don't know. He must not hear us. So I'll just pick up chapter 23 and let me see. Okay. Me... Yeah. Keep, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep sharing and keep going in, bros. Okay. What, what, right. they used to, what they used to say in the New Testament church, keep keep on preaching. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> chapter 23, verse 1 says, and he placed now we can't see your screen though. Bro. Oh, we can't I'm sorry. see your screen though. I'm sorry. Let me let me let me let me get that going no right now. Share screen. And I'm glad you I'm glad you still decided to do this, by the way. Uh, because I super studied for today and I just got hung up in the meeting. So I'm very thankful to the most high that you said I'm still going forward because I'm still getting to enjoy it. Whether I'm reading or you, I'm still in the word with you. Just, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, verse uh, chapter 23, Jubilees, verse 1 says, And he placed two fingers of Jacob on his eyes, and he blessed the Elohim of Elohim. And he covered his face and stretched out his feet and slept the sleep of eternity and was gathered to his fathers. And notwithstanding uh -huh. all, all this, Jacob was lying in his bosom, and knew not that Abraham, his father's father, was dead. And Jacob awoke from yeah. his sleep. Gathered to his people. Yep, gathered to his people. Jacob Sorry. awoke. Gathered, awoke. To his, gathered to his people. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. Jacob awoke from his sleep, and behold, Abraham was cold as ice. And he said, Father, Father, but there was none that spoke, and he knew that he was dead. And he arose from his bosom and ran and told Rebekah, his mother. And Rebekah went to Isaac in the night and told him. And they went together and Jacob with them. And a lamp was in his hand. And when they had gone in, they found Abraham lying dead. And Isaac fell on his, the face of his father and wept and kissed him. And the voices were heard in the house of Abraham and Ishmael. His son arose, went to Abraham, his father wept over Abraham his father, he and all the house of Abraham, and they wept with a great weeping. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the double cave near Sarah, his woman. And they wept for, for him 40 days, all the men in his house and Isaac and Ishmael and all their sons and all the sons of Keturah in their places. And the days of the weeping for Abraham were ended. And he lived three jubilees and four weeks of years, 175 years, and completed the days of his life being old and full of days. For the days of the forefathers of their life were 19 jubilees, and after the flood, they began to grow less than 19 jubilees, and to decrease in mm -hmm. jubilees and to grow oldly, quick, old quickly, and to be full of their days by reason of manifold tribulation, and the wickedness of their ways with the exception of Abraham. For Abraham was perfect in all his deeds with Yahuwah and well-pleasing in righteousness all the days of his life. And behold, he did not complete four jubilees in his life when he had grown old by reason of the wickedness and was full of his days. And all the generations which shall arise from this time unto the day of the great judgment shall grow old quickly before they complete two jubilees and their knowledge should shall forsake them by reason of their old age and all their knowledge shall vanish away. So right there, he's telling us that two jubilees is what, 50 years? So that means you ain't going to make it past 100? Yeah, 100 is about the... The, the the maximum range and some people do live a little bit longer but we know life expectancy is 70 80 years 
Yeah. You know, less than a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. And if, and if those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half of years, they shall say regarding him, he has lived long and the greater part of his days are pain and sorrow and tribulation. And there is no peace. For calamity follows on calamity, and wound on wound, and tribulation on tribulation, and evil report on evil report, and illness on illness, and all evil judgments such as these one with another, illness and overthrow, snow, frost, and ice, fever, chills, and torpor, famine, death, sword, and captivity, and all kinds of calamities and pains. And all these shall come on an evil generation which transgress on the earth. Their works are uncleanliness and fornication and pollution and abominations. Then they shall say the days of, of the forefathers were many, even unto a thousand years, and were good. But uh -huh. behold, the day, days of our lives, if a man has lived many, are three score years and ten, and if he is strong, four score years. And those evil, and there is no peace in the days of this evil generation. And in that generation, the son shall convict their fathers and the el their elders of sin and unrighteousness and of the words of their mouth and the great wickedness which they perpetrate and concerning their forsaking the covenant which Yahuwah made between them and him that they should observe and do all his commandments and his ordinances and all his Torah without departing either to the right hand or the left. For all have done evil and every mouth speaks iniquity and all their works are an uncleanliness and an abomination and all their ways are pollution, uncleanliness and destruction. Behold, the earth shall be destroyed on account of all their works and there shall be no seed of the vine and no oil for their works are altogether faithless and they shall all perish together, beasts and cattle and birds and all the fish of the sea on the account of the children of men. And they shall strive one another, the young with the old and the old with the young, the poor with the rich, the lowly with the great and the beggar with the prince on account of the Torah and the covenant. For they have forgotten commandment and covenant and feasts and months and Sabbaths jubilees and all judgments and they shall stand swords and war to turn them back into the way but they shall not return until much blood has been shed on the earth one by another and those who have escaped shall not return from their wickedness to the way of righteousness but they shall all exalt themselves to deceit and wealth and they may may each take all that is his neighbors and they shall name the great name but not in truth and not in righteousness. And they shall defile the holy of holies with their uncleanness and the corruption of their pollution. And a great punishment shall befall the deeds of this generation from Yahuwah, and he will give them over to the sword and to judgment and to captivity and to be plundered and devoured. And he will wake up against them the sinners of the other nations who have neither mercy nor compassion and who shall respect the person of none, neither old nor young nor anyone, for they are more wicked and strong to do evil than all the children of men. And they shall use violence against Israel and transgression against Jacob and much blood shall be shed upon the earth and there shall be none to gather and none to bury. In those days, they shall cry aloud and call and pray that they may be saved from the hand of the sinners, the other nations, but none shall be saved. And the heads of the children shall be white with gray hair and a child of three weeks shall appear old like a man of 100 years. And their stature shall be destroyed by tribulation and oppression. And in those days, the children shall begin to study the Torah and to seek the commandments, and to return to the path of righteousness. And the days shall begin to grow many. Return! Return! <laughs> and the days shall begin to grow <laughs> many and increase among those children of men till their days draw nigh to 1,000 years. And to a great number of years, then before was the number of days. And there shall be no old... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
hold on. I'm sorry. I'm driving and I couldn't read it as you were saying it. But going back, did it say that that as people return to the Torah in a nutshell, that they would be living longer, closer to a thousand years at some point again? Is that what you said or is that what that means, what you read? But I can't uh, look and find the verse, let, but. Let me go back through and read it again. Let me just read that again to make sure I didn't. 20, I, he says, in those days, they shall cry aloud 20, and call. Huh? 27. 27. And the days shall begin to grow many and increase among those children of men till their days draw nigh to 1,000 years. And to a great number of years than before was the number of the days. I think that sounds exactly what you just said. Okay. All right. And that's based on verse 26. Because in those days, the children shall begin to study the Torah and to seek the commandments mm -hmm. and to return to the path of righteousness. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure I heard that right. So at some point, some of these Negroes and whoever believers, Israelites, true Israel, this is an, a, an extension in years of life, it looks like. If we obey the commandments. Yeah. If, if we obey Draw the commandments. Draw nigh to 1,000. Yeah, but that's... that's, okay. that's all right, cool. I mean, isn't that the prerequisite if we obey the commandments and study the Torah? Yeah, but they're talking. Yeah, but there's also he's having very specific communication here talking about and in those days. So that sounds more like a a later point in time than where last we days. are now. Last days, last days, last, last days, last mm days, -hmm. last days. Yes, sir. Okay. And all their days shall they complete and live in peace and enjoy, and there shall be no Satan nor any evil destroyer, for all their days shall be um be the days of blessing and healing. And at that time Yahoo will heal. Oh, yeah. So that's that's a, that's a that's a that's a later point in time. Okay. We just had to keep reading. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. And no Satan. Time, no Satan. You know. Which we know that that means yeah, okay. that, that that has to mean the New Jerusalem. Yeah, that has to mean at some point when this guy is defeated. And I can't say anything New Testament. Yeah, yeah. and well, so to, to, I, so I'm not I'm not sure if defeated. And I'm and I'm not I'm not saying I know for sure. I'm being honest. Like, I don't know if defeated is New Testament talk. Oh, so the, the Tanakh don't talk about no war that I know of with 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 Satan that I know of. You got to read. And, and that could be wrong. And maybe it is there. Yeah, it is there. Uh, it's, in, it, it's, it's in Baruch and it's in Second Ezra. OK, but it's not it's not it's not Jesus coming back to fight him. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, no. so it's just a war between good and bad, essentially, between the most highs, uh, the most highs angels and Satan and his demons, though, right? That's that's what I that's what I assume. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, not somebody's coming back with a sword to destroy him with one breath. That thing. Okay, cool. All right, I'm with you. Okay. Uh let's see here. Let me see. What verse were we at? I think 28. Okay. I'm so sorry. I can't even see the verses. I, I got you. I got you. 28. And there shall be no old man or no or nor one with who is satisfied with his days, for all shall be as children and youths. And all their days they shall complete and live in peace and enjoy. And there shall be no Satan nor evil destroyer, for all their days shall be days of blessing and healing. And at that time, Yahuwah will heal his servants, and they shall rise up see a great peace, drive out their adversaries, and the righteous shall be see and be thankful and rejoice in joy forever and shall see all their judgments and all their curses on their enemies. And their bones shall rest in the earth. Their spirits shall have much joy 
and they shall know that it is Yahuwah who executes judgment and shows mercy to hundreds and thousands and to all that love him. And do you, Moses, right Ain't that now, powerful, don't man? Yeah, that's all. So that right there, once again, <laughs> covers anybody trying to separate a specific group. Yeah, 1,000%. And in, 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 go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, because he says all nations of those that love him. That love him, right. And we know, and maybe, no, it is Old Testament. Those that love him keep his commandments. I pulled it out the Old Testament. Yes, repeated in the New, but it is an Old Testament scripture. Those that love me keep my commandments. Right. Right. Exactly. So, you know, and he says, but he says, and do you, Moses, write down these words, which again, he's talking to Moses. And for thus are they written, and they record them on the heavenly tablets for a testimony for the generations forever. All right, that concludes chapter 23. Bill, do you want to pick up 24? I don't even know if he's, if he's still with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might as well keep rocking. Okay. Unless, right. you, unless you gotta go. No, I don't. No, I can pick it up. I'll get this last chapter here and we'll be uh, finished here. Chapter 24. Beautiful. Beautiful. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that Yahuwah blessed Isaac, his son, and he rose from Hebron and went and dwelt at the well of the vision in the first year of the third week of this jubilee, seven years. And in the first year of the fourth week, a famine began in the land besides the first famine, which had been in the days of Abraham. And Jacob sawed lentil pottage. And Esau came from the field hungry. And he said to Jacob, his brother, give me of this red pottage. And Jacob said to him, sell to me your primitator, this birthright, and I will give you bread and also some of this lentil pottage. And Esau said in his heart, I shall die. Of what profit to me is this birthright? And he said to Jacob, I give it to you. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And Jacob gave his brother Esau bread and pottage. And he ate till he was satisfied. And Esau despised this birthright for this reason was Esau's name called Edom on account of the red pottage which Jacob gave him for his birthright, Edomites. And Jacob became the elder and Esau was brought down from his dignity. And the famine was over the land and Isaac departed to go down into Egypt in the second year of this week and went to the king of the Philistines to Gerara unto the Vimelech. And Yahuwah appeared unto him and said unto him, go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land that I shall tell you of and sojourn in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and to your seed will I give all this land and I will establish my oath which I swore unto Abraham your father and I will multiply your seeds as the stars of heaven and will give unto your seed all this land. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because your father obeyed my voice, kept my charge and my commandments and my Torah and my ordinances and my covenant, and now obey my voice and dwell in this land. And he dwelt in Gerar three weeks. That's the year. renewal. Yep. And Abimelech. That's one renewal. Yep. And Abimelech charged concerning him, concerning all that was his, say, any man that shall touch him or anything that is his shall surely die. And Isaac waxed strong among the Philistines, and he got many possessions, oxen, sheep, camels, asses, and a great household. And he sold in the land of the Philistines and brought into in a hundredfold. And Isaac became exceedingly, exceedingly great, and the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which the servants of Abraham had dug during the life of Abraham, the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham and filled them with earth. 
And Abraham said unto or Abil, and the Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for you are much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence in the first year of the seventh week and sojourned in the valley of Gerar. And they dug again the wells of water which the servants of Abraham his father had dug, and which the Philistines had closed after the death of Abraham his father. And he called their names as Abraham his father had named them. And the servants of Isaac dug a well in the valley and found living water. And the shepherds of Gerard strove with the shepherds of Isaac, saying, The water is ours. And Isaac called the name of the well Perversity, per because they had been perverse with us. And they dug a second well, and they strove for that also. And he called its name Enmity. Enmity. And he arose from thence, and they dug another well. And for that they strove not, and he called the name of it Room. And Isaac, now Yahuwah has made room for us. And Yahu, now Isaac said, now Yahuwah has made room for us and we ha have increased in the land. And he went up from thence to the well of the oath in the first year, the first week in the 44th Jubilee. And Yahuwah appeared to him at that night on the new moon of the first month. And he said unto him, I am Elohim of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I am with you and shall bless you, and shall surely multiply your seed as the sand of the earth for the sake of Abraham, my servant. And he built an altar there, which Abraham, his father, father first built, called the name upon the uh, called upon the name of Yahuwah, offered sacrifices to Elohim of Abraham, his father. And they dug a well, and they found living water. And the servants of Isaac dug, dug another well and did not find water. And they went and told Isaac that they had found no water. And Isaac said, I have sworn this day to the Philistines, and this thing has been announced to us. And he called the name of that place the well of the oath, for there he had sworn to the Abimelech and Akujath, his friend Pichol, Pike, the perfect or his host, perfect or his host, prefect or his host. And Isaac knew that that day that under the constraint he had sworn to them to take make peace with them. And Isaac on that day cursed the Philistines and said, Cursed be the Philistines unto the day of the wrath and indignation of the, from the midst of all nations. May Yahuwah make them a derision and a curse and an object of wrath and, and indignation in the hands of the sinners, the other nations, and, the, and into the hands of the, uh, what are these? Um, Shittims, Kittims. And whoever, whosoever escapes yeah. the sword of the enemy and the Kittims, may the righteous nation root out in judgment from under heaven, for they shall be the enemies and foes of my children throughout their generations upon the earth. And no remnant shall be left to them, nor one that shall be saved on the day of the wrath of judgment, for destruction and rooting out and expulsion from the earth is the whole seed of the Philistines reserved. And there shall no longer be left for the, the, these, uh, let's see what that word is, um, captorium, a name or a seed on the earth. For though he ascend unto heaven, thence shall he be brought down. The Oh, that's in the uh, book we, Old Testament we know. And though he makes himself strong on earth, thence shall he be dragged forth. And though he hide himself amongst the nations, even from thence shall he be rooted out. And though he descend into Sheol, and there also shall he his condemnation be great. And there also he shall have no peace. And if he go into captivity by the hands of those that seek his life, shall they slay him on the way. And neither name nor seed shall be left to him on all the earth. For into eternal maldiction shall he depart. And thus is it written and engraved concerning him on the heavenly tablets to do unto him on the day of judgment so that he may be rooted out of the earth. That concludes all three chapters, gentlemen. Any questions, comments, or anything else? No, sir. That was good, man. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Okay, then I will see you at 7 o'clock at the meeting. Yes, sir. I will see you at seven. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yep.